Now I ask you this question. Can we live without sin? Is it possible for us today to live without sin? The answer to this question is yes. We can live a sinless life. Why? Because a man has done this before. A man has given us an example of that it is possible to live without sin. It is possible to overcome sin while living in this world. This man's name is Jesus Christ who lived in this world as we are living in this world, subject to all kinds of temptations, but he obtained victory over sin. Many people will say, yes, it is normal that Jesus did not sin because he was half man and half God. Let's take note of these two verses. Let's see what the Bible tells us. The Bible testifies to that. Uh, for, um, the Bible says in the book of uh, Colossians verse, chapter 2 verse, five, verse 9. Let's read together. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. The Bible confirmed that Jesus was divine. Let's read. It's written in Colossians 2 verse, verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yes, it is normal that Jesus did not come, they did not sin. He was the Son of God, He was divine. But also the Bible tells us in the book of Philippians 2, verse 5, verse 5, verse 2, verse 7. Let's go in the book of Philippians. We read it from verse, chapter 2, verse 5 through verse 7. Let's read together also what the Bible says there. Philippians chapter 2, we read it from verse 5 through verse 7. It is written, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Jesus left his divine nature to be to and took the likeness of men the word of god tells us that he stripped himself of his, his his divine nature to and he was made like you and i today jesus was 100 percent a human being because he was clothed in human nature he left aside his divine nature to take on this sinful human nature in the book of Romans 8 verse 3, the Bible tells us that uh, for what the law could not do in, in what it was weak through the, the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sin for flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. The Bible also says that Jesus was in the flesh and the sin was condemned in the flesh. God sent his son in the in the in the flesh like ours, subject to fatigue, thirst and temptation, sin. Jesus had that human nature like ours, exposed to sin, but he did not sin. But what is the difference between this man, Jesus, and us today? Hmm? It is written in the book of Hebrew 4 verse 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all point tempted like as we are yet without sin. So our high priest knows our struggle. He went through what we are going through today. He knows our temptations. He was tempted and he overcame. And we have this hope that whatever Jesus did, we can also do it with the help of, with the same power that helped him to overcome. We can also ask him, this is the same power to guide us, to help us to be victorious. Jesus was tempted, was tempted. He had the human nature and and yet he did not see him. He left his, his divine nature. He, he took off, he was clothed with the human nature, but he did not see him. When he did all the healings, all the miracles that he operated, it was, it was not him who did them, but his father who did them in him. Because we read in the book of John 14 verse 10, where Jesus confirms himself that believers, 
Thou knowest that I am the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. God was the one who was doing all the works of through Jesus Christ, his son. Through the Holy Spirit, the miracles that Jesus did were the Father who worked them through him. It was not his divine nature. Because he left out his divine nature, he must have lived a simple, as a simple man, as you and I today. Jesus led a sinless life lived um, a sinless life when he was just a man like us he was supposed to sin like we sin yeah, but we don't have any excuse because a man lived a sinless life in this world so therefore we can also live a sinless life but how did jesus do it how was he able to live a sinless life let's find an answer in the book of mark mark 1 verse 35 let's see what jesus did in order to live a sinless life mark chapter 1 verse 35 let's let's read from the word of god what jesus did mark 1 verse 35 it is written and in the morning rising uh, rise, rising up a great while before day he went out and departed unto a solitary place and there prayed. All because he had the same struggles as we do. And here, how could he resist? Because his father gave him strength through the Holy Spirit. And the father did it because Jesus asked the help. He asked his father to help him to overcome all temptation, to give him power to overcome. Jesus was in constant communication with his, his, his father to give him strength to resist temptation. Before he began his day, he always pray in the early in the morning in communication with his father. Do we communicate with our heavenly father every morning before we begin our journey? Before, before we go to work, before we go to school, do we require strength from heaven in order to overcome all the temptations jesus is our example jesus came in bodily in body similar to ours to live without sin to show us that yes it is possible to live without sin in the in the first peter 2 verse 21 we read from the word of god from uh, it is written in the book of first peter uh, first Peter, let's go there. First Peter, we read it, chapter 2, we read it from verse 21 and 23. First Peter, let's see what the word of God says in the, in the book of First Peter. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. First Peter 2, verse 21 and verse 22. The word of God is very clear. What the word of God said, 21 through 22, First Peter 2, it is written, for even here to where he called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his step. 22. Who did not sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. There was no fraud, no guile, no corruption found in Jesus Christ. No, it was not found in him. Jesus leaves us this example. He who did not sin. When we read about this, um, about our end, about ourselves, this end generation, in the book of Revelation 14, the, these people who will be sealed by God, we, the, there is also similarities between them and the Christ, because in whose mouth there is no fraud. This is what we read in the book of Revelation 14, verse 5. When we are going to describe the 100, 144,000, we are told that in their mouth there is no lie. Same as Jesus in Revelation 14, verse 5. In their mouth there is no guile for they are without fault before the throne of God. How can we stop sinning? This is the crucial question. How then can we stop sinning? Let's look at what Jesus Christ did. He asked his father every day to give him his Holy Spirit. We also can ask the Holy the, the, our, our Heavenly Father to give us the Holy Spirit in order to stop sinning. It is not about us. You have to ask for that. We have to ask for 
the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not come by himself. We must ask for the Holy Spirit. We must recognize that, that we need help. There is nothing we can do without him. We are miserable and God will give us his Holy Spirit. It is God who will do it in us, not in our own strength. We must become partakers of divine nature because we read the book of Second Peter chapter one verse one. We read that we must um, that whereby are given unto us exceeding great and the precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped this cor the corruption that is in the world through lust. It is through the Holy Spirit, beloved, that we will come. We, we, we will come with divine power that we will have victory over sin. It is not of ourselves. We must ask for the Holy Spirit. We, we, we have to believe that the Holy Spirit can do it in our lives. To continue to believe that it is impossible for us to live a sinless life like many even in the house of, the, of God preached it, speak, taught, it confirms that we cannot reach perfection in this world. Thus, we must stop listening to Satan and his agents. The word of God is very clear that we can do like Jesus Christ. He gave us an example that, yes, it is possible. So, it is possible we can live without sin. We have, what we need to do is to do exactly what Jesus did. Jesus came to give us victory over sin. This is what we read, we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt, thou shalt call him his name, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Christ's mission was to save his people from their sins. But now, we need to understand what what faith is because we, we need faith we must we must have faith that yes it is possible we can live without without sin without we can live a sinless life but we must have faith that it is possible faith is very important in the christian life let's see some biblical examples of faith we have read this story of, of several times of paralytic men in the book of Mark, Mark 2, verse 1 through verse 12. This man was paralyzed from birth. What did Jesus do to heal him? He is going to say to him, Arise, take up their, take up their, their bed, and they go thy way into thine house. What this, what this post man is going to tell Jesus Christ? What this paralyzed man from birth will answer to Jesus Christ? What, do you think that he will say, no, I will not do that. I have been paralyzed since birth. I will not bother myself. You cannot help me. No, this is not what he did. He did not do that. He is going to react immediately. He is going to stand up and start working because he believed if Jesus said so, it is possible Jesus has done it. So he is healed. He is going to heal him. His faith, therefore, healed him. How many times have we read this story of a woman which, which was deceased with an issue of blood for 12 years? We read the story in the book of Matthew 9, 20 through verse 22. How was he? How was she healed then? She had. She said to herself, "If only I can touch Jesus' garment." And she touched Jesus' garment. And Jesus said to her, "Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has hath made thee whole." Because she believed that Jesus could heal her, and she was pure again. Have we also have, haven't, haven't we also read the story of the, this blind man several times in the book of John 9 verse 1 through verse 41 since since birth he was never seen anything but now Jesus will come and spit in the in the earth and make, and make more more and apply it in his eyes now Jesus is going to tell him go and wash thy face in the pool of Siloam. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. He went his way, therefore, 
and washed and came saying what this blind man is going to say do you think when jesus say say to him go and wash you in the pool of Siloam?" he said no i have been blind since birth i won't go i will not waste my time you will not be able to heal me no 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 he believed that jesus when jesus said go that jesus will be able to heal him and he went ahead he went there and washed his face as jesus instructed to him he had the faith his faith healed him and the story of this leper suffered from leprosy and this that dreadful disease here in the book of mark 1 verse 40 we read this story and at exactly uh, at the at verse 40 in mark chapter 1 we read that this leper came to him and falling on his knees in and said he said to jesus christ in a pleading tone if thou wilt thou canst make me make me whole again in this passage this leper is going to say something magnificent he is going to say if you want you can make me whole what ex which can make me clean what extraordinary faith of this leper and the way today we who are sick of sin we are lepers of sin do we really think that jesus can heal us and they make us clean again. We see this mountain of sin and we say, yeah, no, this is, it is not possible to overcome it. If we only have a faith as a grain of mustard seed, if we, 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 if we only have the faith of a little faith, we will, we will say to the mountain to go uh, in, the, in the, this mountain of sin to go into the sea and it will go. If only we believe that Jesus Christ can heal us from sin, we can be healed. Salvation comes from faith. Believe and we will be saved. Let's believe, beloved. Let's believe that Jesus can operate this miracle in our lives. That the Holy Spirit can help us to overcome sin. And yes, indeed, we can be victorious. But unfortunately, we still have doubts. We, we still Doubts do not believe that Jesus can do it in our lives. We must leave our hearts open to the word of God and let Jesus Christ act in our lives. We are proud. We are so proud and we think that we don't know, need the help because the Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Revelation, in the book of Revelation, chapter three, we read it from verse seventeen. The word of God says, "Because thou sayest that I am rich and increased in with." And Crazy with goods and have need of nothing, and it knows not that thou art, thou art wretched. The Bible keeps saying, and the miserable, and the poor, and blind, and naked. Jesus is saying that in the church of Laodicea, the, we, the people of Laodicean church, we are blind, we are wretched, we are so poor, we have nothing at all. But we keep saying to ourselves, no, we have everything. We are rich. We have all the knowledge. We have the scriptures. We have the spirit of prophecy. There is nothing we need to learn. We, everything is, our, uh, is at our disposal. But Jesus say, no, 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 no. You are wretched. You have nothing. So what we need now is to recognize that we are wretched. We need help so that Jesus can take control in our lives. As the Holy Spirit helped the man Jesus Christ, so he will help us to gain victory over sin. Beloved, Jesus is coming back very soon. Look around you and everything suggests that the world is drawing to an end. As Jesus Christ is coming very soon, and the day of his coming is great and is terrible. Who, who shall be able to stand on that day? Who shall be able to stand on that great day of judgment? Only the one without sin in him will be able to stand. My friends, beloved, let us humble our souls. Let us afflict our souls. Let us seek for the presence of God every day. 
every hour in fact always let us privilege let us um because we know we, we are privileged to be part of the, of god's final mission on the planet earth let us humble ourselves we are living on the day of atonement we need to afflict our souls we need to, to examine ourselves we must make sure that we are in agreement with the word of god we must follow God's instruction, require all the requirements of the, the or requirement of the day at atonement in order to stand before God without without being uh, without um, um, victorious. We must go back to the word of God to follow Christ's instructions. Beloved, let us humble ourselves. Let us the Holy Spirit help us. The Bible is very clear. We can live a sinless life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this message. Increase our faith so that we will be able to believe that Jesus can take away sin from us. As Christ cleanses the sanctuary, message, the sanctuary heaven places, Lord, help us to cleanse our hearts as well to the, by the, with the help of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.